up everybody and welcome back to the channel we do have the latest news from imr so we're going to go over the patch notes and uh, everything else in it there is some hero reworks in this as well um so it should be interesting i haven't read it at all we always do this on this channel we always just go through it together and then you sort of get a, a reaction to certain things so you kind of you like know, you should probably make the same reaction as well like okay well that's not that good or that's that's good you know, so that's that's why I do it. Uh, don't forget, Aptoid is currently active. My code TB 5 will be active until the 12th of April. Save an extra 5% on every purchase, as well as initially 10% up to 20%. So you can effectively save 25% on every single purchase. Don't forget, if you need to know how it works, the link is in the description below. Click it, it will show you how to install it, how to use it, and how much money you do actually save. Okay, so without that out of the way, we can go on to the patch notes and have a little look to see what's going on in the world of IMR. Uh, Dear Adventurers, Infinite Magic Raid will be officially updated on April 4th, which is in one day. One, 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 one day. Um, in a new version, we've updated a lot of content. Let's go and check the event news. So the event news, the specified hero type rate up event is available for a limited time from April 5th to April 8th. And I believe it's going to be a double legend event as well. This is going to be a double legend banner. Uh, the up tag of the session is buff. The up heroes of the session are legend Johnny, Shardnow, Hoff, Grace and Bowl. Okay. So these are all very good heroes. Like Shardnow is great. Um, Hoff is, is great for any starting account. Later on you may not use him as much. But he can still be very useful. So don't sleep on Hoff. Uh, Bull is is and has been and always will be a very big hero for pursuing attack and counter-attacking teams. He's still solid. He is from Hidden Ways. Uh, Grace is great in bleed teams. And Johnny, I actually haven't looked at Johnny at all. I haven't looked at Johnny at all. So I apologise for that. I cannot give you any information about Johnny. Uh, Farnell, Isabel, Basidon and Daisy are the epics in this. Basidon is still used actually in cheese teams to, to boost the speed of an ally to make them take an instant turn. Also cleansing and buffing. A double the legend event is available for a limited time during the event. When you get a legend hero from any wish pool, you will get another random legend hero for free. You can only earn that once, by the way. Uh, the city of... <laughs> this is why I don't read them until I make a video. The city of Saman Tapadra. <laughs> what is this? Why would you call a city such a hard name in a game? The city of Saman Tapadra. Samantha Padra. Okay, there we go. Uh, campaign stages, challenge event, and the city of Samantha Padra master <laughs> challenge event are available for a limited time from April 4th to April 11th. You can claim different rewards depending on the number of points you get by clearing stages during the event. The brand new spring themed event, Spring Saunter, is available for a limited time from April 8th to April 15th. No idea what that is at the moment. New feature, added chapter 23, city of Samantha Padra. So I'm getting good. Uh, to a new journey in campaign stages. Adventurers can explore new stages and fight new enemies to get rich rewards. Feature adjustments. Added a hero tag. Direct damage. New season of War of Thrones. New dungeon effect to the season. Added new buffs to line up Soul Bomb, Corroded Land, and Shrinking Light. This is going to be interesting. I wonder what they are. Remove the buff Rugged Tenacity from lineups. Uh, replace the ultimate boss of Endless Cloister, Marius Evolved. Number four, when uh, when now when the higher value replaces the lower value of the same attribute blessings, no diamonds will be deducted. So the value, uh, the uh, the same attribute would that be? That'd be the set. Yeah, okay. The same attribute blessing, the same blessing. If it's a stronger one, you will no longer be charged diamonds to switch that. And number five, increase the cap of preset lineup, changing from sixty to eighty. That's always getting bigger, isn't it? Uh, number six, optimize the display of personal achievements in Championship and War of the Thrones in the interface of Adventure Info. Okay, hero adjustments. Mutu. Mutu is here in the adjustments. And he was a very strong hero. What's he got? <gasps> Just had a little look. My goodness. That's insane. Before, he was dealing 320 to 400% attack damage to single enemy. Had a 15% leech. That's now gone from 600 to 680% attack damage to single enemy. This attack has an additional 30% leech. Uh, passive skill, Werewolf Bloodline. He takes less damage in human form, which we know. That's going to increase to 15 and 35% less damage in human form. When he's in werewolf form, 
it's going to deal more damage and that damage is quite substantial he's now going to be dealing instead of 10 and 20 percent 45 to 65 percent extra damage boy active skill hunting uh used to deal two stages of 380 percent up to 470 percent attack to a single um enemy this attack has an extra 15 percent leech that's now going to be 590 percent and 650 percent attack damage each to a single enemy this attack has an extra 30 percent leech as well this is huge for you too. Level 3, before each layer of claws increasing self-piercing rate by 6% up to 30%, claws will not be removed when the owner dies or at wave transition. So a 6% up to 30 um, is now going to be 8 to 40. So that's very nice. Extra that piercing rate. And that's going to pair up very nice with beer tricks, all right? All right. And remember, it doesn't get removed at wave transition or if the owner dies. Why is my camera gone blurry? I apologize for that. Not that you do want to see my face. Anyway. Uh, Solly. Basic attack. Guardian sword. Before. I, I really hope Solly gets a good rework. We're going to find out now. Uh, Solly grants self and allies under ally protection. Granted by self a shield. Respectively 5 to 10% of Solly's max health for 2 turns. It's now going to be 15 to 20% of his max health for 2 turns. His, pa his passive skill military talent. Before Solly grants ally protection to the ally of the highest attack at the beginning of each wave. Reducing their damage taken by 16 to 24%. That's going to be increased to 24 and 40%. Not enough, in my opinion, for Solly. Not enough of a buff for Solly, in my opinion. Yeah. I'm not mad on that. I'm not mad on that at all. Uh, Will. Okay, basic attack. Attack clear. Uh, before he dealt 330%, he now deals 350%. Uh, basic attack enhanced. Attack clear. Before he consumed all layers of softness and deals 660% defense damage to a single enemy. Now it's buffed up to 700%. Will hasn't been favored much here, has it? I mean, that's not... Active skill. Cut off support. Before removes one layer of buff at random from an enemy target and deals 240% defense damage to a target. That is going to be the same, but he's going to deal 330%. So a 90% defense damage increase there. Attack to active skill enhanced. Cut off support. It was even uh, all layers of cut removes all buffs from an enemy target and deals 480%. That's going to be the same, but with 660% defense damage to a target. Mm, that's a little bit more of a damage increase we'd like to see. 180%. Active skill turn around. <laughs> oh, I can't even make this sad. Uh, deals two stages 140 to 180% defense damage to a single enemy. That's now going to be two stages of 310 to 390. So that's near enough double. That is double. Uh, active skill enhanced turnaround. Uh, deals three stages of 140 to 180. Again, it's the same. 310 and 390. Exclusive free of 30% chance not to consume any layer of softness, cut, and rage. Where after it will be a 50% chance not to consume. So that's that. Be Who is still using Will? It, Will is the tiger guy, by the way. Um, so let me know if you're right. Now, Sana. Okay. This could be a big one. Is Sana going to get much of a re re rework? We'll find out. Basic attack. Wind chain shot. Almost doubled here. Deals two stages of 110 to 150, up to 240 and 280% to a single enemy. Active skill, fluid combo. Before doubt, three stages of 150 to 180 attack to a single enemy. Gains self 30% crit damage bonus. Increases the crit damage bonus of the next stage to 45% when this skill lands a crit. Deals now after, deals three stages of 270 up to 340 30% attack damage to a single enemy and self gains a 40% crit damage bonus increases the crit damage bonus for next stage to 60% when this skill lands a crit you would always want to build sana on an attack crit rate crit damage build uh, passive skill arrow strike before sana's turn meter cannot be reduced she gains one layer of sharp arrow each time she lands a crit increasing 1% speed 1% direct damage sharp arrow can be stacked up to 10 and 30 layers after that's going to be sana's turn meter cannot be reduced she gains one layer of sharp arrow each time she lands a crit increasing two percent speed and two percent direct damage and it can be stacked up to five and fifteen layers so she's going to have a faster uh stacking range of those layers okay it's not going to be any stronger but she's going to be able to stack them faster they're worth double but it's half the layers active skill storm of arrows deals three uh, three stages of 80 to 95 percent attack damage to all enemies and self gains a 30 percent crit damage bonus that's now going to be deals three stages of 110 and 170 percent attack damage to all enemies and gains a self uh 40 percent crit damage bonus so again nearly double on that one uh so sana's had a bit of love thrown her way is she going to be strong enough though i mean if someone's got an e3 beatrix maybe 
But again, you'd rather use Jingle Bell. However, if you don't have all the limited heroes, that all these old heroes getting buffed are going to be valid for all new players coming into the game if they pull these heroes. I can't wait till they buff Zulu. That would be big. Okay, Megan is getting a rework. Megan was an early hero who was released. And she was solid when she was released, okay? So let's see what she's going to do now. Uh, spear throw before it dealt 240, 320% attack damage to a single enemy, 30% chance to inflict a very severe wound for two turns. If its attack lands into crit, there was a 30% chance to inflict a severe wound for two turns. It's now doubled 580 and 660, with an 80% chance to inflict severe wound. This is interesting. Okay, active skill, charge spear. Before, it dealt three stages of 40% attack damage to all enemies. You can see, this is nowhere near enough, okay? 25 and 40% chance to reduce their defense by 30, or tenacity by 30% for two turns. It's now going to be, deals three stages of 100% attack damage each to all enemies, with a 50 and 80% chance to reduce their defense by 30, tenacity by 30. Can I just say something quickly? Those of you who use Margarita in the cheese team, this is a similar kind of attack now. Alright, so you see what Margarita does in arena teams with Poseidon, that cleave. It's a similar kind of thing, alright? So this is actually quite strong. Uh, active skill, piercing spear. Uh, used to deal 607, 20% active uh, uh, attack damage to all single... Attack damage to a single enemy. It now deals 840 and 1,020% attack damage to a single enemy. When are they going to buff Lucifer? If you're buffing heroes like this, you need to start buffing Lucifer. Less, less, you know, they do. They're buffing these heroes. They are going to be... My goodness. A rework on Lucifer now with these kind of attack damage increases would be insane. Would be insane. He needs it. You know he needs it. He does need it. But that is actually a very good patch notes. There's some really good changes in here. Some new content. Some feature adjustments. Mu2 has had the most favourable... Rework, I would say, Solly. Ignore Solly still, unfortunately. And Will, I mean, I was never mad on Will anyway, but I believe he was useful in Force Mark Tower. Um, Sana, potentially she could be more useful. I mean, if you're a late game player, you still wouldn't use her. Megan, though, could be an interesting one. She could be doing a bit more on those accounts. And the great news is, is that this helps all of us in Faction Abyss to push on a bit further if we're limited on certain heroes, okay? So even if it's not going to target the late, late, late game content, it's still going to be huge for all of you in Faction Abyss. That's the great thing about these hero reworks. So I'll see all of you in the next video. Have a fantastic day, even wherever you are. And don't forget, if you want to support me in my channel, use Karzak TB5. Take care, goodbye.